May I have your attention, please? Uh, this meeting was to start at 6. I believe it is 6, and therefore uh, we'll start this meeting. Certainly welcome each and every one, one of you here to city, at to city Hall. I know uh, most of us would probably rather be home in our warm homes and not be out here, but nonetheless, we're here to talk about your city and a very important project within our city. And this project has been talked about for over 23 years. And of course it is creating a new east-west corridor through the city of Noblesville. Tonight we are releasing the results of another new study that once again points out that Pleasant Street is the right corridor. It would start at 37 and Pleasant, <clears throat> with one rep west with a bridge over the White River. <clears throat> I thought I was finished with this cold, I'm sorry. A bridge over White River and then go all the way to uh, Hague Road at 32. There is a reason that these studies do point to Pleasant Street as being the route to take because Pleasant Street is the most efficient and effective location for this corridor. You'll hear in a moment how the need is undeniable as the data from about Pleasant Street is the best route to take. Believe me, growth, however, and we've experienced some growth pains and we're here now to talk about growth and some of the pains of growth. But growth is a good problem to have. And a problem we're talking about keeps getting worse as the years go by. You know why? Because Noblesville is a great place to live, work, and do business. What is not so simple, however, is to stand here and talk about creating this corridor. We need to do so with respect to our heritage and also preserving the small town environment that we have in this city. My duty as your mayor is to know, know and care for all of the city of Noblesville. If you don't know, we're about 60,000 residents at this point in time. But I do know there are many people in the audience that have questions and concerns. That's why we wanted to have this meeting. So we give each and every one an opportunity to talk, speak, and we will listen to your input. And of course, you may ask any question that you may, may wish to. I hope that you'll keep an open mind, and I promise that we will keep an open mind as we proceed with this project to find the best way to go about this for the benefit of all of Noblesville. This evening, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our new Deputy Mayor, Steve Cook. Steve? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in August, our administration, we met with the uh, leadership group from the Southwest Quad Neighborhood Association, and we feel that we had a, a really good meeting uh, to hear the concerns from the residents about this project and to, from our perspective, go over the data that the city and the county have collected together over the last 20 years. Uh, we were asked then at that meeting to, once again, consider the alternatives, look at our options. So we've done that. And we've taken a hard look at all the studies that have been conducted over the last two decades about a new east-west corridor. So we also decided that the city needed to do, to conduct a route alternative study. So if we're ever gonna request federal or state funding, this is a necessary step that we have to go through. And the results of the study are what we're here to present tonight. So you're going to see traffic counts, you'll see cost comparisons for the various routes, what you're not going to see is precise real estate impact. So you can see the, the maps on either side. These show potential routes. They're still preliminary. So as much as, much as we'd like to be able to tell everyone you know, whether a, partic a uh, particular real estate is in the path of this east-west corridor, we're not quite there yet in the process. So we want to make sure that everyone understands that. We presented this information to our common council about a week ago and we're coming to you tonight to present this information so that you can see the data and understand why an east-west corridor is necessary and why we think based on the data that Pleasant Street is the most effective and efficient route for our community. So I'd like to introduce in a moment John Beery, our Director of Engineering. He's gonna come up here and review the results of the study with you 
Um, I believe we have at the end a, a website where everybody can go to our uh, city website to check out the study for themselves. He and I will also present some additional considerations we'd like the public to hear about. And then we will open up the meeting to the public for questions or comments. So at this time, I will introduce John Beery, our Director of Engineering. Thanks, Steve. Um, I, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, it's not a very nice evening outside and appreciate the time you're taking to come out and be with us tonight and to listen and have some dialogue about uh, what's going on and look at some of the things that we're talking about. A uh, couple of logistics. If you'd like to speak uh, for a couple of minutes, um, we do have some sign-in sheets so we can make sure you have some allotted time to talk. Uh, we'll call you up to the podium so uh, you can share your questions and ideas and then if we can answer those questions at that time, we'll do so. Um, and I, will like to I would like to tell you a uh, couple other things. All information tonight that we're going to go through in the slides is already posted uh, online. And at the end, we'll get we'll uh, show you where the links are at. If you go to the city's general web website, everything can be found uh, in a uh, general search on the city's website. We've also got uh, the maps on the poster board. The map from the poster board is also posted online. And you can find that readily through uh, the department website or the general city website. If you have any issues, again, we're going to give you some uh, email addresses and uh, uh, some other information at the end of the presentation. If you want to write that down, uh, you know, please feel free to do so. And if you have any further questions about how you get there, we can, you know, we can even go through that. Um, just kind of talk about the objective of expanding east-west corridor. As the mayor said, this has been going on for quite a while, and it proceeds quite a few of us, some not so much, others uh, by quite a long time. Um, the objectives of, of expanding a corridor east-west through town, it does re it would relieve traffic congestion through, ta uh, through town, uh, ease stress on the historic downtown itself, enable future further growth of downtown, uh, require a western connection somewhere on Hague Road or somewhere uh, River Road on the west side of town, it would require an Easter connection somewhere with State Road 37 to provide efficient route east and west uh, through town uh, and access to commercial and residential areas through town. Um, it, would it would improve trail and downtown connectivity in between, no matter where the corridor would be. It would improve uh, pedestrian access as well because we'd plan uh, some type of pedestrian improvement uh, with any route that we would decide or uh, decide to pursue through town. I'm going to jump kind of back from where maybe we we're, were a year ago at this time. Uh, we felt that there were some issues that needed to be connected, maybe answered from the previous study uh, that was released about a year ago. Uh, kind of jump back, take a look at some additional alternatives that maybe we didn't feel were considered at the time, or uh, reevaluate other alternatives that were mentioned in other reports, past reports uh, uh, in the late 90s. Uh, there were seven primary factors that we looked at, uh, I guess, when we initially kind of started cracking books and looking at all the information that we had assembled. Uh, we looked at past studies. Uh, we looked at initial route locations, kind of evaluated just a triage of alternatives. Uh, we looked at environmental factors that included floodway, floodplain, uh, wetlands, quarry pits, existing landfills that might be within the route of any, any proposed corridor. Uh, we looked at uh, facilitation and access to connecting routes, what there was available on east and west sides of town. Uh, we looked at travel times, traffic counts, efficiency and capacity through town. We also looked at origin, or the origin and destinations of users, where people were actually coming from and where they were traveling to uh, and existing travel, travel patterns through town. We also looked at maybe, our, we also looked at the possibilities of diverted and induced demand, uh, putting in routes uh, comparative routes and determining what traffic would be rerouted or how it would create more efficient routes through town and how other people would be diverted through town in other areas as opposed where as opposed to how and where they're driving now. We began with previous studies, plans, and analyses. These are all uh, available through various uh, uh, various agencies and. If you have any questions, I can readily tell you, you know, where you can maybe access this information. 
uh, the first talk of any type of thoroughfare plan or corridor through town was discussed as a part of the 1995 thoroughfare plan and comprehensive plan developed within the city of Noblesville. Um, it was done, I guess, in conjunction with uh, Hamilton County who followed up in 1999 with a study and a technical memora memorandum of bridge locations, proposed bridge locations at different locations through town. Some of those locations were eliminated, others were built. For example, Field Drive was a part of that 1990 uh, White River Bridge study. There were also other alternatives considered and developed as a part of that study. Uh, I think 146th Street was developed and considered through there, although I can't remember specifically it was a part of that study, but it was also the idea for 146th Street and improved corridor on the south side of town was also developed in the mid to late 90s. Uh, there was an additional study done, it was solely a traffic study uh, on the Pleasant Street Bridge Analysis prepared and published by the county in 2008. Uh, we consulted and reused and updated that study as well since it was available. And uh, everybody's familiar, uh, the primary reason why we're here, the 2015 uh, Pleasant Street Feasibility Study was released about a year ago this time. Uh, the city also in, uh, contracted with a couple of consultants and used uh, the Indian, Indianapolis Metropolitan Planning Area organization's travel forecast and demand model for traffic information uh, in and around uh, the area and through town. Uh, we utilized our traffic impact fee studies, uh, which we rely on heavily uh, to determine the impacts of new development in town. That's a series of traffic counts and estimated impacts on development that we update uh, on a four-year cycle. Uh, we propose uh, impact fees associated with those projected developments. The traffic counts that are updated or collected and updated every four years are very valuable in determining historical information through town. Uh, that led to historical traffic data. We also did some uh, available research through NDOT, uh, specifically on uh, State Road 3238 corridor through town. And we also completed uh, some other mini supplemental studies uh, associated with that historical data to update it, uh, update some technology and some other things, uh, gathered some other data to include and enhance past, uh, past information. We're gonna start with the earliest, I guess, conception of you know, what people thought was a route through town. Uh, the original route on the city's thoroughfare plan is an alternate east-west corridor through town was the Pleasant Street extension across the White River uh, to Hague Road. It's located on both Hamilton County and the City of Noblesville Thoroughfare Plan. Uh, though the genesis of those two plans uh, started in the early 90s and then kind of hardened and fastened and began uh, appearing on maps in the mid to late 90s. Uh, we also uh, looked at historical traffic data and trends on State Road 3238 uh, available on NDOT website and from uh, the Greenfield District. Uh, they keep detailed traffic data on uh, key state routes in, in every county, so we kind of cracked the books and gained a bunch of historical data uh, f uh, from NDOT uh, to monitor or take a look over the years at uh, traffic on State Road 3238. In all the historical inter uh, uh, all the historical data that we combed and went through, we found a couple of interesting details and facts. The first time Pleasant Street was actually extended and upgraded uh, was in the late 90s from about 1995. Construction occurred in 1998. Original traffic projections for the original Pleasant Street project that was completed in the, uh, the late 1990s predicted by the year 2013, uh, Pleasant Street uh, at 19th Street would be doing about 8,000 cars a day. We identified through present traffic counts that Ple existing Pleasant Street hit its design uh, within five years of opening. So it was at capacity within five years when it opened uh, back in the late 90s. Also interesting, uh, I wasn't gonna include this originally and it appeared in the council, I presented it to, at the council meeting. Uh, in 1998, we saw anomalies on Connor Street uh, related to the effects of Pleasant Street being closed for construction. You see in 1998, traffic numbers ballooned on Connor Street because Pleasant Street was actually closed. So it's not just Connor Street has an effect on Pleasant Street, Pleasant Street actually has an effect on Connor Street presently. Um, this slide just typically shows a 48 hour period through town. 
Uh, what you typically have on a road that serves residential areas are two peaks during the day, and there's four peaks shown because it's a 48-hour period. You typically have a peak in the early morning, 7 a.m., uh, where you have about 10% of the traffic that occurs daily, and then there's another p.m. peak through town. So in any residential area, this traffic count on New Hazeldale Road on the west side of town, you typically see two sharp peaks in a day, people going, going to work in the morning, coming home in the afternoon, and running their errands. What's interesting about both Pleasant Street and Connor Street, they don't act like typical residential streets. They act more like arterials. Traffic goes up in, in the morning and, and is sustained throughout the day. Although you do, do see two primary peaks early in the morning and late in the afternoon on Pleasant Street, Connor and Pleasant typically mirror each other in, in how they serve uh, traffic daily. Conclusions on historical traffic data that we, that, uh, we acquired, Pleasant Street carries more traffic already than it was originally intended. Uh, both Connor and Pleasant Street act as arterials in tandem and function differently than other local streets in town. Cherry Street, East of 19, and Pleasant Street act as alternate routes presently for Connor Street. Um, if anybody's driven recently in the last several years, uh, although we've made changes to Cherry Street at the entrance of State Road 37, Cherry Street actually re currently relieves them and does about five to 8,000 cars a day between 19th and uh, State Road 30, uh, 19th Street and State Road 37. So there's actually a third route there that people kind of cheat to avoid both Pleasant Street at Cumberland Road and 19th and, 19th and uh, Pleasant. So with all this data, we kind of started looking around town for available routes, and I'm going to pull... <coughs> started looking at available routes through town and determined uh, a total of nine east-west route options, uh, anywhere from maybe a one-way or two-way options through town uh, to improve capacity through town to alleviate some type of traffic uh, on east-west routes through town. Uh, some of the corridors that were considered uh, that show up in red, uh, Logan Street, Cherry Street, Maple Street, as well as Hannibal and Division, uh, we also consider an extension division across the river, which uh, we'll talk about in, in a little bit. Uh, we considered Pleasant Street, a crossing near South Street, and another crossing near Irving Street, and uh, Irving and South, and one at Carbon Street, and associated uh, north-south connectors to ensure that each one of the uh, east-west routes connected to some type of northwest corridor terminated either on the west side or east side of town at a north-south corridor. Preliminary routes identified in elimination for consideration for practical reasons were Logan, Maple, Cherry, Division 19th, and Hannibal Streets. Uh, impacts and limitations on each corridor, either parking or available, uh, uh, available land available for expansion for any of the corridors. Uh, all the corridors eliminated had no sufficient outlet to State Road 32 and limited connectivity to the west because of the cemetery. Uh, the cemetery kind of creates a western barrier on the side of town that forces you to go one way or the other to get, get around it. Uh, the Division Street corridor uh, uh, across the, the, the river to the south side of the uh, uh, south side of the cemetery was eliminated from consideration uh, during the 2015 county study because it was technically inefficient to get across the river and really didn't terminate in a good spot uh, to transport traffic northwest on River Road. Uh, locations also not on the thoroughfare plan and it doesn't align with any possible westward expansion. Some of the environmental considerations that we looked at and we're going to have to look at in the future if we consider uh, any other option or any of the options. Location of wetlands, uh, the map shown above in, in, uh, in the overhead uh, identifies green areas as wetlands. It also shows uh, floodway and floodplain. Uh, we have quarries uh, located on the south side that will either have to adjust uh, routes uh, accordingly or uh, spend more money on options to get around them or through them. Uh, there's also uh, landfills located on the south side that would be uh, that would affect any location and require mitigation and uh, severe expense for long-term ownership. That's shown in the purple bubble. So after we 
took a look at eliminating north-south options, east-west options because of infe infeasibility, uh, we essentially came down to five different options. Option A would be improve Connor Street, existing Connor Street to gain capacity through town. Option B would uh, propose a Pleasant Street crossing and improve Pleasant Street. Option C uh, would be a crossing at South Street and Irving Street on the south side, uh, just north of the casting plant. Option D would be a crossing somewhere uh, around Carbon Street and where it uh, runs between 10th and 8th Streets. Uh, the fifth option is a no build, uh, which we'll kind of briefly touch on at the end. Uh, we also considered not in this option, uh, options A, A through D are solely for locating a bridge to determine their cost effectiveness to cross the river and get traffic east-west through town. Uh, there are options that are costed that get traffic north-south, which includes interchanges at State Road 37 and up, maybe upgrading uh, either River Road and a westward expansion of Pleasant Street up to Hague Road. We're not going to discuss those tonight because they're secondary options to get traffic north-south from any of the east-west locations, which are included options uh, A through D. So from this point on, we're going to discuss options A through D, uh, some of their costs, their, the effects of the routes, and some of the alignments that, uh, uh, that we came across whenever uh, we decided to site bridges at each uh, options A through D. This is just a pictorial version of an overhead of the maps that we have here on hardboard. Uh, they depict the east-west corridor option routes. Uh, option A again, Connor Street would be upgrade Connor Street, added travel lanes to improve capacity through towns. Option D would include Pleasant Street. Uh, C is the South Street Irving uh, option. And uh, option D, Carbon Street. Option D, the, or E, the no build's not shown. Once we had the options picked, we did a preliminary impact analysis and uh, estimated cost for each individual route. Uh, this matrix is just a cost comparison of each individual route, and it summarized the uh, preliminary program level estimates for each individual alternative. It includes land acquisition, estimated land acquisition costs, construction, utility relocation costs, design, construction, engineering costs, as well as uh, total cost for each alternative. I guess the key component of this item, uh, since technology, especially with the collection of traffic data, is changing drastically every year. There are upgrades. Uh, wireless technology enables people to collect traffic data in ways that we, that we were not able to collect five and ten years ago. Um, so we asked the county for permission to update their traffic model and utilize that in conjunction with the MPO's travel demand model and hired a consultant to go out and do origin and destination study on traffic along the existing corridor. Origin destination study simply evaluates if you pick up a car, determine where it's going, and then where it returns. Uh, Bluetooth data available, you can go out and collect uh, car data as it's traveling through town. Uh, we had a consultant come in town and do a study determining where people are actually driving when they're actually on both Pleasant Street, existing Pleasant Street, and uh, Connor Street as well. The, the, the results of that study determined, after we got the study determining where, where people go, each individual option was placed in the travel demand model. Option A, singularly, then it was removed. Option B was added. B was removed. Option C was added and modeled. Option D was added with C. They were actually all modeled individually. Um, the effects of that study and with the origin and des destination data uh, said that siting a bridge or improving Connor Street would not remove any traffic from Connor Street, so we'd simply be reconstructing Connor Street to add capacity. Uh, locating a bridge at option B would remove 29% of the existing traffic between uh, River Road and White River. It would remove 18% of the existing traffic on Connor Street uh, between 10th and State Road, 10th Street and State Road 37. Option C would remove 13% of the traffic between River Road and uh, 10th Street. It would, it would only remove 7% between 10th Street and State Road 37. Uh, with option D, 
uh, we're moving eight and six percent respectively. So you can kind of see as the travel demand model modeled the data that we had and the existing data, the further away you move the corridor, the less people will be using it and less cars will be drawn from either Pleasant Street or Connor Street. Once we had that data on estimated cars relocating or changes in travel pattern, we took each option and divided the total cost of each option by the percentage or the estimated number of trips removed from Connor Street. Um, those results are shown here on the matrix. Um, it showed option B actually performed the most cost effective, which is Pleasant Street over the 20 year life cycle for, for uh, the design of the project. The next set of slides are just a matrix going over the pros and cons. These aren't hard or fast, they're just what jumped out at everybody uh, when we started going through the data. Option A, Connor Street is the lowest cost option. Um, it does not disrupt any other areas in town. Um, it's an existing route. The cons, it would remove parking downtown along Connor Street through the business district. The limitations and effects on corner locations to affect truck turning. Um, it would have, it would not solve any issues with truck turning on Pleasant, uh, on existing Connor Street. It does not alleviate congestion at 8th and Pleasant or on Pleasant Street. Um, the impacts are significant between 8th Street and State Road 37. Uh, if we decide to do a no-build option and don't consider anything for the future, option A would be the, the fallback option for a no-build option. Option B, Pleasant Street, it improves already existing capacity problems. Uh, we have capacity issues presently identified in each one of our last three uh, road impact fee studies at uh, 8th and Pleasant, 10th and Pleasant, 16th and Pleasant, 19th and Pleasant, uh, and State Road 37 and Pleasant. The existing corridor already has problems. Uh, it's already, one of the pros, it's already used as an alternate route to Connor Street. It's located on the thoroughfare plan. It's a lower cost than option C and D. It, it has the highest impact in the travel demand model. It's the most efficient travel route, closest proximity to downtown area, it provides a primary route for pedestrians for the Mill and Trace through town. Mill and Trace presently does not have a corridor from 6th Street to State Road 37. Uh, Pleasant Street would provide that alternate route for Midland to get uh, east-west through town. The cons, it does have the highest impact to residential area. It has the highest number of relocations. Option C, South Street, Irving Street, Pros, it's a lower, uh, it's lower impact to residential area than option B, although it, it does have significant impacts and relocations. Uh, it is a lower cost option than option D. The cons, it, it, it has significant impacts to wetlands, floodway, and it has severe landfill constraints. It affects, it affects industrial locations, and it does have environmental concerns, long-term environmental concerns. Option D would be the Carbon Street Crossing. The pros, it's the furthest away from the downtown area. The cons, it has the highest impact to commercial areas. It's the lowest return on diverted traffic. It's the most expensive option. Again, there's environmental concerns with this crossing. It has the highest level of impacts to wetlands, floodway, and floodplain. It has issues with the proximity and addressing proximity to gravel pits located uh, along that corridor. Some of the conclusions we developed on both current and historical traffic data, we kind of threw what we knew versus what we found out together. Uh, improvements to River Road, 146th Street, Field Drive, and Logan Street have reduced traffic and demand on Connor Street historically. That has happened. Uh, roadways such as uh, Logan Street, west of, uh, west of the river, State Road 38, west of Logan and Pleasant Street have seen steady and significant impact or increases in traffic through town the last 20 years. The growth of the shopping and retail area on the east side of town has already induced demand on the Pleasant Street. It's induced on the Cherry Street and it's reduced traffic on Connor Street east to 8th Street. 
The interse- again, I, was, I stated this earlier, the intersection of Pleasant Street with 8th, 10th, 11th, 16th, 19th, and State Road 37 already have some type of capacity issues. 8th Street experiences heavy traffic delays in peak hour because of induced demand on Pleasant Street. Pleasant Street's the cause of the problem at 8th and Connor Street. The future, uh, one issue that wasn't pointed out at the, uh, at the meeting with council in the public meeting, the open public meeting 10 days ago, the future project along State Road 37 corridor will eliminate access onto State Road 37 from P- Cherry Street. Those impacts are either gonna be delivered to Connor Street or they're gonna be delivered to Pleasant. That 5,000, 5 to 8,000 vehicles a day that are kind of cheating Cherry Street to get to the commercial areas are gonna be moved somewhere, either one of those corridors split evenly, split to the south one way or another. Summary, notes, and conclusion. Again, I said no build option. If we choose to do nothing, you know, uh, essentially it's gonna revert to 8th Street, Pleasant Street, or Connor Street corridors because of present demand and poor levels of service, especially along the Pleasant Street corridor. Based on current performance and traffic levels on Pleasant Street, work's already needed on that on that corridor. And I'm not gonna deny, I don't think anybody that's looked at this or discussed it internally or externally, any new route is gonna have impacts no matter where you place it. We realize that and we're here to try to reduce those as much as possible if and when we move forward. We're gonna open it up to questions and comments. I'm gonna turn it over to Steve. This is the slide that I have available. Uh, it's for you. Uh, if you want to write the email address down, making moves at nobleville. Dot, or making moves at nobleville.in.us is the primary contact contact email address. Um, you can also sign up for future newsletter and updates on uh, the status of this project or any uh, any other projects that we update in the future. And there's a link, the connection to the city's website where you should be able to find all this data. It's already been posted. But I want you to know we're still in a study phase. Study phase. Um, if and when we decide to fund, take the next step forward, there are a lot of meetings ahead no matter what corridor is considered. So we just want you to leave here with that. This is you know, probably a key point in the decision making process. But if and when we decide to make the next step forward and there's funding or a route decided, there will be more meetings in the future. I want you to know that. I'm gonna turn it back over to Steve now. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Just a few points before we do turn it over to the public for questions and comments. Um, you know, we've heard from an engineering perspective that this project is necessary. You know, the numbers don't lie, but we also understand that this isn't all about the numbers. Otherwise, all of you wouldn't be here tonight. Um, we realize that this project will create a, a huge challenge for residents that live nearby Pleasant Street and for businesses. Um, we're not gonna downplay that impact as John said. And we also respect the historical significance of the area in Johnstown and, and in Southwest Quad. I met with uh, David Highway, our county historian, earlier this week just to learn more about the area. We've got a meeting set with Indiana Landmarks, a representative who's gonna come out here and drive the route with us so that they can help point out some of the uh, significant buildings and the significant cultural history of the area that we don't want to lose. And we think that we can work together to help preserve that history that is worth saving. Um, The other thing that isn't really up here is where are we going with our downtown? It's the vision of our administration to expand the downtown. You're already seeing that with, uh, with Blue Sky Headquarters, with Federal Hill Commons, a lot of exciting projects that are coming. That's gonna bring a lot of people We're also looking at bringing more residents and nightlife and culture to the downtown area. That too will bring more people. So again, we wanna be able to work with the community to protect and preserve our history and to design this project if it's funded and approved in a way that benefits our community and the residents nearby. So that brings us to uh, one of the benefits of the project that we wanted to talk about and that's the Midland Trace Trail. John had pointed out that the Midland Trace Trail as it comes uh, through the city from the west is go- could, uh, could hook up with Pleasant Street to cross Cicero Creek and to cross the White River and uh, through the Southwest Quad area into downtown. And we think there would be uh, a lot of benefits to many people. Um, some people use trails to get back to nature. 
uh, but not all trails are through the woods. Sometimes trails need to be near neighborhoods and business centers so that people can quickly and easily access through trails. So we think the Midland Trace Trail hooking up with Pleasant Street is a huge benefit of this project that, correct me if I'm wrong, John, could potentially be funded uh, with the Pleasant Street project. John, did you want to talk at all about Midland Trace in terms of the construction and the, the timing of that project? We had to preemptively address some of the questions that we've had about Midland Trace and its effects in relationship to any road project through town. Just to kind of give you an update, the city, um, the city's been actively developing projects and preparing them for bid uh, all along the corridor. We've been building on the east side of town. There's uh, sporadic trail extensions going on uh, east of State Road 37. Um, we were in lane acquisition stages for about a length of two miles uh, from Gray Road to about Willoughby Road on the west side of town. Our first phase of the Midland Trace as a design package will be bid sometime in January for construction of the trail segment from Hazeldell Road to Gray Road. Uh, we've received a federal grant for construction to construct the next phase, which we're tentatively planning for 2018 from Hazeldell to Willowview Road. So presently we're actively working on extending that trail corridor from west to east and getting our way through town. Um, of course, when you're working on a, a project like that, some people are for, some people are against. I understand both, uh, you know, both sides of, of opinions when you extend trail projects, but we've taken steps in the last couple of years to really push forward with the whole corridor, but I will advise we've always struggled to figure out how we were going to get it through town, and we feel that that relationship with Pleasant is a really good, uh, a really good match to carry that trail through town and connect it from where we're coming already west to where we've installed things uh, already to the east. We've got a few parcels we need to obtain to the east and we look to do some construction out there next year. And I think uh, we'll have trail extended from State Road 37 to Union Chapel Road, one continuous length of trail, finished sometime out there by the end of next year. We've had some donations and some land acquisition going on out there, but uh, we anticipate putting in a trailhead at, uh, at Hazeldale Road where the Midland ties in uh, from, from the west. We've purchased the property there. And once we bid the initial phase of the Midland, get the path paved, we'll come back, put the amenity center in, hopefully next year with the remaining funds, next year meaning next 2017, right after the beginning of the year. So that project does go active. So as soon as we start working our way into town, people are gonna be wanting to cross the river and link up with that project where we were extending the river walk down toward the wastewater treatment plant to meet it at the Midland Trace uh, just north of the wastewater treatment plant where option, I believe option B crosses the river. So there's a lot of dynamics going in, on right now and there's gonna be the need to balance the two projects sometime in the future. And we're thinking, we're, we're thinking about that, how we're gonna get people across town as well. So just keep that in mind. We're kind of balancing both right now. Yep, thank you. So given everything you've heard from the city, now it's, uh, it's your turn. We wanna hear from you. So we, were you able to sign up Okay, well, um, okay. Yeah, we've got some uh, some sign-up sheets. Um, do you wanna go ahead and take this one first and then we'll get yeah, to the we'll folks? If anyone else has a- order, so we can call people to ask questions. Yes, he is. 